Hey everyone, Freak here. For those who don't know me, I am a Diamond 3 or 2, I decayed, I was in China, uh, level 80 carry or bot lane main. I am a commentator for the North American Pro League and I'm an overall huge aficionado of math, for those who don't know me. And I wanted to do a video on Runes Reforged as we know it so far, uh, as of the time of this recording, we're on patch 7.22. I've played probably, well, enough to be level 33, almost level 34, uh, within two days of the thing coming out. So I've been putting a lot of games into the system. And I had some thoughts. People have been asking me to get some uh, some stuff out for the runes, so let's go for it. Um, for those who haven't really tracked runes reforged, just to give the quick overview of what's happened, uh, the old rune system and the old master system are both gone entirely. Uh, some, well, all champions got some base stat adjustments. Uh, everyone got either armor or health per level, sometimes both in smaller amounts. Uh, some champions got attack speed, some champions got attack damage, and then no one got magic resist, no one got regen, no one got flat health other than the health per level that mages got. Um, what's interesting is that the way the system is now is you still have the option of opting into defensive stats, but right now almost no one really is. So everyone's dying really quickly. Uh, games are ending a little bit faster than they have uh, in the past, and people are trying out new stuff. Certainly some champs are overpowered, some are, some are underpowered, there have been some changes overall, uh, but by and large the system's been pretty balanced. So I wanted to get into actually the runes now and uh, and what, what we've seen with them so far. So. The first thing I want to do is actually do a rundown of the actual math behind things and, and what these runes actually do. So first off, I want to define a term that is called uh, adaptive. Uh, it's not this. Let me, it's, hold on. It'll be in the domination tree. Uh, there's a thing called adaptive, um, right? Hitting a champion with three separate attacks or abilities within three seconds deals bonus adaptive damage. Uh, or if you go into the sorcery tree, there's a rune down here called Gathering Storm that it gives you attack damage or ability power, adaptive. Uh, so to describe what adaptive means is basically it looks at what you've bought. Do you have a Doran's Blade or a Doran's Ring? Do you have a, you know, a, a, a Rabbitan's Death Cap or an Infinity Edge and says, okay, well, you're building ability power or you're building attack damage. We'll give you that stat. Um, that's what adaptive means. Also similar to things like Arcane Comet dealing adaptive damage. It's physical or magic damage based on the exact same criteria. If you're a champion who started a corrupting potion, then basically there's a flag set by the game designers to say, you're playing Nautilus. You're probably using ability power more than you are attack damage. So you're going to be getting magic damage for Arcane Comet and ability power through Gathering Storm, uh, things like that. So that's quickly defining what adaptive means. Um, and basically, yeah, champions have many fewer stats coming into the game at level one compared to what they used to have, uh, unless you can make up for it in runes reforged. So for example, if you go sorcery and you pick your runes, whatever, you're getting some more attack damage or ability power. Once again, adaptive right here, there's the term, right? Based on what you're doing, affected by item purchases. Um, based on what you're doing, it gives you, gives you things. And again, it makes up for offense. The only way you don't get offense if you go for a resolve primary, in which case you're getting bonus health. But again, no one got their quintessences like compensated. No one got their glyphs compensated. No one got all their defensive mastery choices compensated. In fact, there's no direct compensation for the old mas mastery system at all. And from what I remember of looking at rune pages and master pages, a lot of people would go into the resolve tree of the old mastery system and get 50 bonus health, some health regen, some armor and MR when you take damage. And so again, we circle back to the point that champions are a lot squishier than they used to be. This can make things very difficult to deal with because champions are a lot squishier than they used to be. Um, and I think right now people are running around and playing with the new toys and that's great. And over time, people will realize that even though armor and magic resist are not sexy stats, you know, you, uh, ooh, five armor. Why do I, why do I want to get five armor when I could get like a zombie ward, right? Isn't a zombie ward more exciting? And it is, but a zombie ward might not help you win as much as five armor would help you win. And that's one of the big things that we're seeing right now with players in the beginning of the game. Okay. So let's actually break down some of the math because that's really the, the primary thing that I do here. I do a lot of math. 
uh, doing gold values of, of things and whatnot. And it, I don't know if I really want to go down to like list the numbers of everything. I feel like that's a really sort of dry, but um, I guess I'll do some, some key highlights. Basically in any given uh, path, right? If you go precision plus X, uh, this stat right here, which you're getting as your, as your bonus stat, the attack speed or ability power or health or whatever, in almost every case, it only cares what your primary is. Precision plus sorcery is no different from precision plus resolve. There's no difference in the stats, whether it's domination or inspiration is your secondary. This doesn't change at all. So precision gives you attack speed. Domination gives you attack damage or ability power. Sorcery gives you attack damage or ability power. Resolve gives you health. And if you're an inspiration and primary instead, it gives you about a 10% bonus quote on whatever this is. You also get some potion and elixir duration. So inspiration actually gives you more stats than the other the other routes, the other paths. Um, so keep that in mind. The inspiration technically is a little bit more, but the downside is that you have to get not only an inspiration keystone, unsealed spell, but glacial augment or kleptomancy, but you also have to get a third set of runes, a, a, a third row, a third slot, whatever you want to call it, instead of the two here. So if you don't really want hex flash biscuits or perfect timing, well, too bad. You went inspiration primary. This was the cost you had to pay. Um, Unsurprisingly, Inspiration Primary is not very common right now. Uh, people are going to have a hard time figuring out who they want to run these things on. I, we've seen things like Kleptomancy be very good on uh, Ezreal and Sona, for example, and Gangplank, and people will figure out over time what they really want to do. All right, so for the points where it's actually relevant, I'll talk about the math. Uh, as far as the actual path bonuses, they're all pretty close together. Uh, Precision's attack speed with 450 gold. Uh, the Domination's attack damage slash ability power is with 390. The Sorcery version's about 525. The Resolve's about 350. So there's a bit of difference back and forth. Resolve definitely gives you the least stats of the four, and Sorcery gives you the most of the four. If you're an Inspiration primary, the numbers change a little bit. It's an even 500 gold worth. If you go for Precision's attack speed, it's about 575 in both Sorcery and Domination in attack damage and ability power. Those numbers actually match up. Um, the reason Sorcery has more as a primary is its keystones do less damage than Domination's, generally speaking, by a small amount. And so the idea is that they compensate slightly with base stats. And uh, Inspiration plus Resolve is about 385 gold worth of stats. So again, the number's off by a little bit. Um, so let's actually break down some of the more apples to apples comparisons that are actually gold value related. Uh, so one of the big ones that are just that's just raw stats and one of the very few slots of runes that give raw stats is over here in the precision tree, uh, Legend Alacrity, Legend Tenacity, and Legend Bloodline. It's obviously very hard to uh, really properly quote uh, how much uh, Legend Tenacity gives you in gold value because if you compare it to the boot options with like Berserker's Greaves and Digitabby Mercury Treads, um, if Mercury Treads are, are supposed to be 100% gold efficient, it costs you like 110 gold to get 30 tenacity, and there's no way that's the real cost of tenacity. Um, if you want to compare it to like Berserker's Greaves and Ninja Tabby, that gets awkward because like Berserker's Greaves are like 200 extra gold efficient, so then maybe you're spending like 300 gold for 30 tenacity, at which point then it's 10 gold per tenacity, uh, which is like not really amazing in that way if you're at you know, 200 or 20 tenacity from legend, it's only worth 200 gold for the for the rune, and that's less than life stone attack speed gives you. So it's it's really hard to do the numbers properly. Um, but the numbers do seem to support that the legend tenacity, uh, for what I can do, is pretty reasonable. But basically, uh, one thing that I've seen is people are are very keen to jump off alacrity, off tenacity, and like every marksman player ever goes bloodline. They all go for the life steal. Now what's interesting is mathematically, mathematically. Legend Alacrity is 50% more gold value than Legend Bloodline, right? The, the fully stacked attack speed is worth 450 gold of attack speed, and the life steal is worth 300 gold worth of life steal. And because it's 150 gold difference in the efficiency, at a certain point, I'm just willing to go for a Blade of the Ruin King or a Vamp Scepter or something else and just get some life steal. Or, I mean, maybe if I really have to, like, I can go for an Inspirate or a Precision Primary and get, like, Fleet Footwork for extra life steal. Uh, or at least, you know, regen, health, whatever you want to call it, and just take the gold efficiency. There's actually a pretty meaningful difference there in terms of the gold difference granted. Um, you add that to the 18% attack speed precision gives you as a primary, and you've got like 30-something attack speed just out of the gate. Well, out of the gate, Adelar on level 18, or sorry, minute 18 when you fully stack the thing. Um, there's a lot kind of going on there, and you can have so much attack speed that, you know, with Berserker's Greaves, you're just, you're just clean all the time, and, and, and life is really, really easy. I want to talk about some other runes as far as their, their math and their, their gold value is concerned. Uh, one thing that I've seen a lot of people jump onto is Transcendence. It's everyone 
loves going sorcery, and they love getting transcendence. Ooh, 10 CDR at level 10. Oh, man. And if you get extra CDR, oh, it becomes attack damage or ability power adaptive. And I feel like transcendence is, like, by far the most popular rune in, in the entirety of League of Legends. I'd be willing to bet transcendence is literally the most popular rune in the entire game right now. It is the worst rune in the game. Okay? <laughs> As far as gold value is concerned, it is the worst rune in the game. Now you could make the you could make the argument that CDR is undervalued, but basically CDR costs about 25 gold per point. Whether you look at things like Glacial Shroud or Fiendish Codex or um, uh, Kindle Gem, and I think Caulfield's Warhammer also follows this mold, CDR is worth about 25 gold per point, give or take like three gold per point. Um, based on which item you're looking at, because they're not all exactly the same balance level, but it's worth about 25 gold per point. This, this is worth 250 gold. Remember, I talked about Legend Alacrity being worth 450 gold worth of attack speed. And spoiler alert, Legend Alacrity comes online before Transcendence does. So if you, like, consider CDR and attack speed to be of sort of similar value, and you're, like, looking at the shop, wondering which one you want to buy, and, and keep in mind, like, when you're buying items in the game... You're buying them with gold. So gold value is a very easy thing to, to remind yourself about. Legend's Alacrity bonus is worth 50% more. Actually, no, sorry. It's worth almost double Transcendence. Transcendence is worth 250 gold. Legend's Alacrity is worth 450 gold. And it starts at level 1. Please do not overvalue Transcendence. As a secondary point, talking about Transcendence, if Transcendence becomes attack damage or ability power, then it starts to get a bit more fair. If your build was really going to put 40 CDR in your build, like you're going to go Black Cleaver plus Visage plus Warmogs, okay, then it gets closer. Then, if you're in that situation, then Transcendence is worth 420 gold if it's attack damage, or 435 gold if it's turning into ability power. Okay, that starts to become more reasonable, and suddenly now if you are buying 40 CDR in your build, now it's about as good as Legend Attack Speed, Legend Alacrity. Right, then it becomes a bit fair. So what's funny, what's interesting actually, is again, what math is telling us, and again, you can make the consideration or the, the argument that CDR is underpriced as a stat, and maybe that's fair, um, that transcendence really only pays its weight when you're further on into your build, and you compare that to Legend Alacrity, where it pays itself off much sooner, and that's a really big deal. Um, obviously, if you just want to target 40% CDR because it's a really big deal, sure, you can do that too. Transcendence is okay for that. Um, a cooldown reduction actually multiplies itself in value because going from 0 to 10 is not worth as much as going from 30 to 40 in CDR. So, like, the, the like incremental change is kind of a little bit higher there. Uh, there there's some marginal value of that. But I want to call your attention to uh, some other runes that are really, really gold efficient, though. And you look at uh, over in the inspiration tree with things like Biscuit Delivery where it gives you regeneration, and then just the, the the flat mana value it gives you in the 160 extra mana you gain, 3, 6, 9, and 12, the 4 biscuits you get, um, that's 224 gold worth of mana. Now, not everyone needs max mana, but if you're going to be a Tear the Goddess user, and you're going to turn that into you know an Archangel Staff or, or whatever, or you're playing Kastin or something like that, uh, of course, it's still facing off against perfect timing, so it's a bit difficult to use, but uh, again, it, it can save you quite a bit of money. That sounds pretty good. Uh, and again, 400, uh, 224 gold worth of that. The actual stopwatch costs, unless I'm remembering something wrong, 600 gold. So if you get a commencing stopwatch, it turns into a stopwatch in six minutes, and a stopwatch is worth 600 gold. So this is a, uh, at six minutes, you get 600 gold once you eventually buy Zonius, or Guardian Angel, or Stone Plate, or whatever. Unless I'm doing my math wrong, I don't think I am, but... Um, if I'm doing something wrong and it's like only a partial completion, uh, I could be wrong with that, but I don't think so. You look at something like Magical Footwear, again, gold value of this one is actually really, really, really high. Does nothing for the first 10 minutes, but when you get it, the actual boots you get are worth 420 gold. Because you're getting the free 300 gold boots, and then the 10 move speed, if you just extrapolate from what boots cost in the first place... That's worth another 120 gold, so it's worth 420 gold. And then, the boots you upgrade it into are because you get a 50 gold discount. So this actual rune is worth 470 gold, which again, if we look at Legend Alacrity, that one's worth 450. You can kind of see a train here or a trend here. The ones that are of pretty obvious monetary value, the numbers in the four to 500 range, right? 470 for the boots, 450 for Alacrity, 420 if you start converting on uh, Transcendence, things like that, right? 
you start to kind of pick up on the trend here. Futures market, another very obvious gold one here. Uh, futures market, by the way, uh, I think is actually, I'm pretty sure is weak, although I'm not sure for certain. Basically, it becomes free gold. Yes, you you lose money on the lending fee, but you know it essentially is worth 160 gold when it turns on at two minutes. You can you basically have another 160 gold waiting for you to spend to hit an item spike to to finish something on time at 10 minutes it's worth 200 gold at 30 minutes it's worth 300 gold uh now these numbers not as high like if you're going into debt to buy a dagger like eh, whatever uh one thing i've noticed by the way is something, something that's actually kind of interesting is people will look at oh my gosh but you go into debt when you buy these items it's so easy to to get behind you're, you're going down in money keep in mind that Unless you get in debt six times by 30 minutes, you're still ahead in gold because going into debt just means you still have the money, right? You just bought the Infinity Edge or the Red Elixir or whatever. Okay, yeah, next time around it's 50 gold less, but you can still go in debt again to buy more items. So futures market never actually penalizes you. You can just go less into debt. And in fact, I almost wish that it that it was described as instead of being a lending fee that it just lowered your debt limit because that would feel less bad to players while still being honest because again until you go into debt six times by 30 minutes or okay f four times or whatever by minute 20 or minute 10 right four four times by minute 10 uh 20 anyway the math works out in the end trust me i did it right one time uh, but until you go into that that many times you're still using the game's money to buy your items and not your own money right so so it looks bad seeing this lending fee thing, but again, I wish that they said debt limit went down instead because I think it would make more sense for a lot of people. Um, and the fact that you can just finish your Infinity Edge, because uh, that's the funny thing about, about items as I kind of rant on about, about gold and value of things is gold is worth gold and you can get like, you know, X gold worth of stats. But when you combine things like a Black Cleaver or an Infinity Edge or a Zonia's Hourglass, you get more than the gold of what you bought, right? There's a reason that people don't just buy six BF swords and then upgrade from there. They finish an Infinity Edge, they finish a Zeal, they finish a Static Ship, they finish a Hurricane, they finish Ninja Tabby, they finish Cinder Hulk. They don't buy five Ruby Crystals, they finish Cinder Hulk, right? And, and, and so by the very nature of how the item system works, buying items with gold is worth more than the gold value of the item if that makes sense right they are hyper efficient almost all completed items are hyper efficient so it actually makes sense that futures market uh doesn't have the same on the tin gold value because as long as you think about using it you're getting more than its actual debt limit in real stats when you finish an infinity edge for you know the 425 gold combine or whatever it is you're getting more than the 425 gold worth of stats like think about um essence reaver for example essence reaver is a 200 gold combine that like if you've got a static shiv or something waiting for you, it just gives you another 20 CDR for 200 gold. That's like 500 gold worth of stats in addition to the attack damage you get in addition to the, to the mana steal on crit and all these other things. Like uh, I know I'm ranting about this, but but I, I want to mention really that, that Futures Market is undersold and it looks unimpressive on the tin, but it's better than you think. Um, going through more gold values, looking at Minion Dematerializer. Uh, once again, Minion Dematerializer becomes real gold and real gold turns into efficient items which means it's worth more than what is listed as far as the stats are concerned and those actual numbers can be hard to describe and hard to properly uh compare but uh, if you just all you ever do with minion dematerializer is last hit six cannons that you would not have last hit before this is worth 285 gold so again we looked at futures market which when you got into a 30 minute game was worth 300 bonus gold uh you know 300 debt gold Minion Dematerializer, buy your sixth cannon mini that you would have missed, and we're averaging uh, about 400 or 47 ish gold per cannon. I mean, they spawn at like 45 and they go up over time. Um, that if you just last hit six cannons at, you know, 47 ish gold per cannon, you've made about 300 gold. If you go down and hit uh, melee minions instead, okay, it goes down a little bit. If you got six melees, it's only worth 120 gold. That's not nearly as sexy, obviously. Um, but that's not even counting the fact that you will then do bonus damage to minions in the future. So your last hitting gets easier, your wave gets easier, which might have some sort of map-wide value for that. Like if you're playing Trindamir into Teemo, for example, like if your lane sucks, if your lane is abysmal, you might consider going minion dematerializer and just last hitting six cannons with it. Because now you've made 300 gold over the course of, 
you know, nine minutes or whatever. Um, and you now last hit cannons more easily for when you, you wave clear later on and push lanes down and, and you can start catching up. And again, the gold value of that is worth roughly the gold value of Legend Lifesteal. And you're probably going to build a Vamp Scepter at some point anyway, so it's not like this is your only source of lifesteal if you're going to go for the Legend Tree, you know, uh, down here. And uh, that's Domination, I meant to say Precision. Um, but yeah, if you're going to go and, you know, pick up... Like, if you're going to go Precision Secondary to pick up Bloodline, you can just go Materializer, last hit Cannons, and then buy a Vamp Scepter. Yeah, it doesn't one-shot a Vamp Scepter for you, but again, it gives you the gold to pay for that much lifesteal. And then it turns into a Blade of the Rune King later on and suddenly you've hit a Power Spike. Um, so really a lot of these people, a lot of these people that splash, right? And they go, oh yeah, 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 I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go into my Sorcery Secondary. I'm going to pick up Transcendence. Uh, I'm going to pick up Gathering Storm. Oh, I have all these stats. I'm going to scale. It's like, well, but Transcendence gives you less gold than Dematerializer gives you. It gives you less gold than Magical Footwear gives you. It gives you less gold than Biscuits gives you almost. Uh, pretty close to that, right? And so people are, 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 when you start looking at the math, you realize that a lot of these things are much more efficient than you might have realized. Uh, I'm going to go down the line and look at some of the other things that have kind of gold values on them. I have a big table off of my second monitor that I'm looking at. Uh, one thing I want to talk about with Transcendence before we go off this topic of Transcendence. Um, this Transcendence, when it turns into attack damage instead, it turns CDR from being worth 25 gold per point to being worth... Um, uh, 4.2 gold per point uh, because it turns into 1.2 attack damage or it turns into 4.35 gold per point it turns into two ability power uh, because when you buy things like a finish codex again it's valued at 25 gold per one percent but we know what attack damage ability power costs which is 3.5 gold per attack damage or 1.7 ish uh, gold per ability or 21.75 uh, gold per ability power that's the number so one of the builds i've been seeing on twitter that people have been talking about is black cleaver stacking with transcendence like playing darius getting transcendence or jace or whoever right whatever you want to play and getting like five black cleavers and boots and so i ran the math on that i wanted to see how efficient it really was to stack black cleavers forever okay well a black cleaver costs 3,000 gold and uh, the item in and of itself is uh, before you count the unique passives, such as the Armor Shred and the Phage, is actually two, uh, 2,967 gold efficient, right? Uh, and again, it costs 3,000 gold. So your first Black Cleaver, you're paying 33 gold for two really good unique passives, so really good item. Um, you buy a second Black Cleaver, and if you didn't have Transcendence, you'd just be paying 33 extra gold for the stats, which doesn't seem that good. And of course, if you were to buy number three, number four, and number five without Transcendence, you'd just be paying 33 gold more than the stats would want you to pay for. That seems bad, right? That seems weak. And yeah, to no one's surprise, of course it would be. Why would you buy the same item seven times? That doesn't seem very good. Okay, that's true. That's fair. Um, of course, with Transcendence, once you buy Black Cleaver number three or number four or even number two, you start to convert cooldown reduction into attack damage because of Transcendence, right? And as we talked about before, the Transcendence like conversion is actually really gold efficient it's really quite good so again you buy your first black cleaver and it and you know you're paying about three thousand gold for some really good stats of course you want to buy it um you buy your next black cleaver uh and oh wait i need to scroll down to where the the math was somewhere else uh, yeah here we go um when you buy your first black cleaver you're suddenly getting a lot better things um now Black Cleaver number two is 136.7 free gold worth of stats, right? You pay 3,000, you get 3,136 worth of stats. Okay, suddenly, wow, the first one's pretty good. Cool, because you've, um, you only got 10 CDR from the Black Cleaver, and then you got uh, 12 attack damage instead of the other 10 CDR. So, you know, even though you normally would have gone down like 30-something gold, you instead go up 136. And then from then on, Black Cleaver number three, you actually get 306.7 bonus gold. Just forever into the future now, your Black Cleavers give 400 health and 64 attack damage instead of 40 attack damage and uh, 20 CDR. And each one of those Black Cleavers, forever into the future, is 306.7 gold efficient. So it's uh, 10 point, like 10.22 gold efficient, right? 
that's that's what you've got. You've got a 10.2 repeating gold efficiency going on, 10.22%. Uh, uh, okay, well, that seems pretty good, right? Once you're at to Black Cleaver number three, number four, because keep in mind, like Black Cleaver two is like 3% gold efficient because you're getting 130 gold out of a 3,000 gold, like, or okay, 4% gold efficient, whatever. Um, so if Black Cleaver two is 4% gold efficient and Black Cleaver three is 10% gold efficient or above the normal and Black Cleaver four is 10% gold efficient, that's what you're getting, right? you are getting the ability to buy efficient items with Transcendence. So Transcendence, again, itself is worth about 250 gold, and then Black Cleaver 2 gives you 136 gold, and Black Cleaver 3 gives you 306 gold. Okay, so we're starting to stack up gold values here, right? And it's starting to be worth a lot of gold. But again, we compare it to Legend Alacrity, which is worth 450 gold. So it by itself, if you care about attack speed, that's an if. I mean, Legend Alacrity stacks up faster and was worth your first two black cleavers anyway. Um, it was just good. Okay, once you're at three, you start to beat the mold. Once you're at four, you start to beat the mold. You start to get better because it's a it's you know a, a you know infinitely stacking thing. But uh, again, the com the comparison and consideration has to be made that all items should be efficient, right? It's not like oh, I'm getting to buy black cleavers instead of BF sources. I get to buy black cleavers instead of like a Sterix gauge or a gargoyle stone plate or boots or something that are incredibly efficient or a guardian angel and it's like do you want a slightly efficient damage health item okay a very efficient uh, a moderately efficient damage health item that requires a rune choice or do you want just the other items in the build especially when you consider that things like blade of the ruin king of leandria's torment are built to destroy health stackers like when darius has no other movement speed tools and no resists at all and gets hit by Landry's Torment that burns of like 100 damage per second, like, at a certain point, it's just not the efficient build anymore. And so I wanted to spend some time talking about that specific build point because uh, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about it, and I wanted to kind of actually share the math on how good that really is. So I'm going to move on and talk about some of the other points we have here, some of the other options in these trees. The ones that you can actually do math for. Uh, so we had Transcendence, that's great. Transcendence, you know, is not a bad rune, but it's, I think it's, incredibly overrated because it looks sexy on the tin. Celerity, 4% bonus move speed, and then you add 8% of your total bonus movement speed, which is boots and any rune buffs and any ability buffs, uh, to your attack damage or ability power, adaptive as we talked about. Um, okay, well, we look at it, and on the tin, if you were to get up to 400 move speed, which is slightly above average, but not by a lot, um, because if you're, if you're the slowest, if like, if you're Nautilus with Ninja Tabby, you're at, um, 370. And if you're Master Yi with Ninja Tabby, you're at 400. Um, if you were to get slightly magical boots for the plus 10, or if you have, um, that's, that's pretty much it. If you had like a flat movement speed bonus, cause like Nami's on your team or something, then you could boost above 400. So 400 is like a slightly high estimate, but it's a very round number and it's not off by much. So I think it's just pretty fair to use. Um, celerity, just in the movement speed capacity, again, if you are assuming 400 as the number, and the lowest you could ever have is 325, so it's not off by that much, is 192 gold worth of stats right here. 192 gold worth of stats. That's not bad. Again, it's not as much as Transcendence, um, but it works at level 1. It works at level 1. And even if you, like, take a small cut because you didn't buy boots at level 1 or whatever, it's worth, like, 150 or more, right? Even if you're at, like, uh, either way, like, the math works out, right? So it's worth like half of Boots of Speed just at the very start of the game. Um, or, yeah, basically, the very start of the game. Even if you had 300 move speed, which is actually impossible, it would still be worth 12, which is still half of Boots of Speed, which is uh, would be 150. Um, so it's worth, you know, 170 to 190 or so gold just in the in the movement speed capacity. And movement speed, again, is is a heavily under-costed stat. And again, I talk about this with CDR as well, where CDR is probably under-costed as well. But there's a reason literally everyone in the game always buys boots and they always buy boots too and some in fact buy boots three which cost a crap ton of money and they still do it because the movement speed is actually worth much more than the gold value so when you say the gold value of celerity is 192 in real value it's probably close to double that right it's probably double that value for most actual players what they actually would consider uh paying for this kind of stuff so uh celerity even just for the movement speed is actually insanely good uh, insanely, insanely good. And again, it's hard to get the actual numbers right, but it's something around there. Uh, we look at what it would give you. Again, if you had uh, pretty much just Boots 2 and Celerity giving you move speed, so just the 45 plus 16-ish uh, that Celerity is granting you, and attack damage or ability power, this 8% bonus, worth another 113 gold worth of AD or AP. Um, 
in terms of the gold value, and again, we're talking about the gold value of under-costed movement speed, it's about a 300 gold rune. And again, this is a 300 gold rune that comes online really, really quickly, right? The, the brunt of it comes online just at the start of the game because you get movement speed, and then you get another, like, you know, third of the value or another half of the value once you get up to boots two or so and you get uh, a little bit of extra, you know, attack damage or ability power. Now, I want to point out, again, that these, these runes are not insanely high in number. Like, your actual item purchases and your actual champion choice means more, right? Like, again, Celerity gives you 15-ish move speed, which does not make... Nautilus run as fast as Master Yi. Nautilus will still not catch Master Yi just because you're running Celerity. The differences in move speed are still too great for that. But it might help Nautilus run away from Singed without Mega Adhesive being used. Might do that. Might help Singed catch up to a Caitlyn without uh, Mega Adhesive being used. That's that's the parts where it starts to matter. Um, but again, the gold values are not all that high. The stat values are not all that high. So for example, I ran the numbers on Celerity with Phase Rush. Like if you're playing Singed and you, know, you run up there and you trigger... Uh, the max value of phase rush, you fling them, you get the auto attack on, poison just hitting them, you trigger phase rush. And you have celerity. It's not even worth 13 extra ability power. It's worth like 12 and change. Um, because you get your 30% movement speed buff, you get a ton of extra movement speed, you feel really good, you get like 100 extra movement speed out of this one, and you get 8 ish. Right? Like plus, you know, whatever your boots upgrades are, so maybe you're closer to you know, 400 or whatever, but, like, you're getting 10, 12, 8, like, with phase rush on, with, like, with the gigantic movement speed boost, it gives you temporarily 10-ish ability power. Like, it's not that high. Like, yes, it exists. Yes, it matters. Yes, it's there. And certainly, like, you can go faster than just phase rush. Like, if you are using Predator and Ghost and Hecarim E, it gets a bit higher. Maybe you have, like, 12 attack damage because it's roughly 0. 0.6 to 1 the attack damage to ability power conversion for adaptive so like it would be 20 ap or 12 attack damage like and hey 12 attack damage is 12 attack damage like that's not zero that that's that can be meaningful it's 12 attack damage it, it multiplies your your e charge damage maybe it multiplies your first hecarim q you know like this it still exists it still matters but this is not like suddenly you've gained 300 ability power and you only need to stack boots and now you're a god. Like, that's not how this works. I just want to kind of make that clear to everyone that this is not nearly as insane as you might think. It's a nice to have. It exists. It kind of matters. Uh, but it's not absolutely bonkers. I didn't actually do the math on absolute focus. I don't know why. I just kind of forgot to do it because I'm silly. Um, but 40 ability power is 870 gold. And the attack damage is very close to that. Um, it's... 840, I think. Um, yeah, it's 840. So, uh, you know, if you can literally never take damage in a team fight, and actually the very first game I ever played of Runes Reforged, I took this this rune, and I was playing Jinx, and I was like, yeah, Jinx is a double zeal user, doesn't have a lot of raw attack damage in the build because you're only buying the Infinity Edge, and then you're waiting for, you know, your last Whisper to come in. So uh, actual raw attack damage seems really valuable. I'll run Absolute Focus. Now, the problem was they had a Maokai in the opposing team and an Udyr. And they loved to dive me. And so I was never, ever, ever at full health in a team fight. So it fell off a lot. But, hey, dude, if you're playing Janna or Sona and you're playing backline really, really safely, it's 40 free ability power by the end of the game. Now, keep in mind, it's based on level, not game time. When you're playing support Janna or support Sona or support even Zyra, if you're playing backline far enough or Karma, etc., you're level 12 when the game ends. You're getting, I don't know the actual scaling. Unfortunately, it's not listed here. I wish it were. That's too bad, but you're not getting the full of 40 ability power. So uh, things like this are actually going to feel and be worse than you'd think they are um, on supports, which is too bad, but it's really, really quite true. More runes that have math on them. Um, water walking is a pretty simple one to look at. When you're actually in the river, you get 300 gold worth of move speed. And again, it scales based on level, so I don't know the exact, the exact numbers, but it's up to like 600 and change gold worth of attack damage or ability power. So this, this is like worth almost 900 gold worth of stats for every Baron fight, every Dragon fight. And in fact, every time you, like if you're a jungler and you just want to kill Scuttle Crab, you have more AD when you're killing Scuttle Crab. Congratulations. When, you're, when you want a solo Baron, congratulations. Or, well, okay, you want a solo Dragon on, uh, on uh, Fiddlesticks, right? You hit the Satchel Plant over the wall. Okay, well, you've got 30 bonus ability power. Okay, not 30, but, you know, let's say 12, whatever the number is. Okay, you have 12 AP for the for the dragon take. That is non-trivial. It's not insane, but...
but it's not trivial. It's not trivial at all. Uh, so, you know, reasonably meaningful here. Gathering storm. So again, keep in mind the numbers we're talking about here, right? We're talking about, uh, you know, the 400 plus range. Uh, you know, we're talking about the 400 plus range for things that you're stacking over time. Uh, usually your legend stacks uh, max out around 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, they start with something. Uh, as we saw from uh, Slightly Magical Boots, they come in at 10 minutes and they're worth like 470 or so. Uh, some really, really high number. Gathering Storm looks really slick, right? Dude, look how much attack damage ability power I could get. 168 AP? That's insane. Like, think about how much damage, like, a singe that built full tank and then got 160 free ability power would do. His ratios are bonkers good. And I actually think that Gathering Storm is... And also things like, like Water Walking and Celerity, even. The things that give you small amounts of bonus stats are actually really good on tanks that don't build a stat normally. Because when you're playing Ash or Jinx or whatever, and you've got 212 attack damage, and then it goes from 212 to... 236 it's like okay yes i'm doing 10 percent more damage but like meh like it just and especially like if you're victor right like okay i'm an 800 ability power victor okay now i'm an 840 ability power victor why bother like why bother i don't think literally any mage ever should ever 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 take absolute focus and in fact i don't think mages take gathering storm if you're 60 minutes into the game as like vagar You've got 900 of the AP already. Why did he be at 1,000? Who cares? It doesn't mean anything anymore. It's literally useless. There's no point at all. I think the, the actual champions to get Gathering Storm and Absolute Focus and even, to a certain extent, Celerity are the champions that don't get ability power normally because, you know, having your Poison Trail do 10% more damage because you got 80 AP, and that's actually underselling it by a lot, um... It's a really big deal. What, you know, when you're playing Nautilus or whatever, and you've got your Dorms Ring and your Dark Seal, but then you have to build a Sunfire Cape and everything else, like, you get a meaningful difference in your actual damage dealt. Like, Gathering Storm's difference in your output is actually really high in this case. Um, and so I think the proper use of a, a rune like Gathering Storm is actually on the tanks, uh, who will actually notice 60 ability power in their builds. All right. Let's move over to, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do, to the Resolve Tree. The Resolve Tree, I think, is woefully, woefully underutilized. We're just going to click numbers here. I think it is woefully underutilized because, of course, the new season's out. Everyone's wanting to play everything. I feel like we're, you know, we're playing a ton of normal blind pick and whatnot. Everyone's playing Rengar and Kha'Zix and stuff like this. The Resolve Tree is really good. Now, unfortunately, the actual path bonus is really weak. The gold value is super low. Um, but also keep in mind that the earlier into the game you are, the more health matters. Like, people have, like, 450 HP at level 1. Adding 130 is a gigantic boost. And certainly, yes, adding 12 attack damage when you have only 50 or so is a really big boost as well. But it means more... Because think about it this way, right? A brand W does like 80 damage and then burns you some. All right, if you get like 20 ability power, the 80 damage becomes like 90 damage, right? You're doing one eighth more damage. If you had a thousand health, this would be one eighth more health. No one has a thousand health at level one. Um, and in fact, as soon as you get rank two brand W, it now does 120 damage and you're adding 12 with your 20 ability power, and it does 10% more damage. You need to have 100, you need to have 1300 health for inspiration's health to be only 10% more, right? Like ability power falls off compared to like ability ranks way faster than health falls off compared to durability. Um, certainly, yes, okay, regeneration is a factor and all these other things. Like there's, there's other things to think about when you actually play a laning phase for realsies. But even though the gold value of plus health is kind of low, it actually means the most in the early game. Uh, you can be nearly invincible. Also, keep in mind that if you have bonus health in your in your runes or in your items, it means that Hunter's Talisman deals bonus damage to jungle monsters, uh, which is a really big deal, like doubles the damage output or something like this. All right, but gold value. Let's talk about gold value. Grasp of the Undying. When it gives you 5 health, that's worth like 13.3 uh, gold of stats per tick. So if you're triggering it, let's say, 3 times a minute, like once every 20 seconds, you know, one to two times per wave, uh, you're getting like 40 gold per minute in value, which at 10 minutes is 400 gold worth of value, which is 
what we're talking about, right? We're talking about if you use it three times a minute for 10 minutes, you trigger it 30 times. That seems reasonable, right? 30 times is um, 150 health. It's not that much. It's not that incredibly expensive. It's 400 gold worth of stats. Now, good, it's the keystone, but the keystone does other things too. It deals damage and heals you as well. It's a lot of stats. You can get a lot of stats with Grasp of the Undying. I mean, you're getting 130 health for inspiration, another 150-ish per 30 triggers of Grasp. Like, you can stack up health really fast. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of health to get here. Like, tanks did not lose out in their their durability and runes options. I don't think at all. They got a lot back here. Um, again, it's hard to really compare a keystone. It's the only keystone that grants permanent stats, really. Um, one thing you can compare it to, I guess, is Kleptomancy. Kleptomancy gives you five gold and a temporary consumable every time you trigger it. Um, so if you can trigger Grasp ev like once every three times that Kleptomancy triggers. You're basically making up for it. Now, Kleptomancy might be easier to trigger more than three times as much as Grasping and Dying. That's completely reasonable. Um, and keep in mind also if you're if you're a ranged champion, uh, Grasping and Dying only gives you two health. So um, instead of five, so instead of 13 and a third, it's like five-ish gold. But I mean, at that point, Grasping and Dying literally gives you the same gold per trigger as Kleptomancy. And whereas Kleptomancy gives you a short duration consumable, you do some magic damage. So Grasp of the Undying is actually tuned pretty close to Kleptomancy, and a lot of people have been talking about Kleptomancy being pretty insane. Grasp does very similar things if you're okay with getting health, which means if you're playing Gangplank, I mean, Grasp triggers basically the exact same way Kleptomancy does, which is you're fighting a Dominion Wave and you press Q on the guy. Now, certainly you probably don't have quite the same value of health if you're Gangplank, but I mean, it's like a two and a half to one ratio. At a certain, like, if you could spend 150 gold on a ruby crystal as Gangplank, would you? I would. That's insane efficiency. At a certain point, like, it's just great. So I think Grasp is actually underrated, especially when you compare to Klepto, and Klepto, like, feels amazing to use, but um, I don't think it's actually nearly as, uh, as janky as people think. Uh, I think Grasp actually is getting a fair bit of respect, but I just want to point out, like, a lot of people have been, like, really excited for Kleptomancy, and I think Grasp is actually really good as well. Um, for somewhat similar reasons, to be fair, but I mean, the efficiency is really high. Um, now I want to talk about the most underrated runes in the entirety of League of Legends. Iron Skin, Mirror Shell, and even Conditioning. All right. After 10 minutes, gain 8 armor and 8 MR and increase your armor and MR by 5%. So I use several different champions as examples for this. So again, at level 10... Um, Transcendence turns on, and for those who don't remember, Transcendence is, at level 10, 10% CDR. Alright? At 10 minutes, which by the way, spoiler alert, for every single player in the game, is well before 10 minutes. I mean, well before level 10. Uh, it, or sorry, it's at 10 minutes. 10 minutes comes far before level 10 comes in. I just want to make that very clear. Um, there's a significant difference in this. So if you get Transcendence, it's worth 250 gold. Now, if you get Transcendence to turn into ability power, it's worth 435 gold. Okay, that's pretty good. Again, that's similar to what Legend Alacrity gave us at 450. Cool. Conditioning. If you trigger it on just a level 10 Darius, is worth 427 gold of stats. Right? You get 160 gold of armor, you get 144 gold worth of magic resist uh, in the 8 and 8, and then you add the 5% of everything else he gets from his base stats, and it's worth 427. In fact, if you're a bigger tank and you would have 200 armor and 200 magic resist, which are not insane numbers, this rune is now worth 684 gold worth of value. There's not a lot of runes worth 684 gold worth of value. Most things cap, this one doesn't. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, of course, it comes on at 10 minutes, but as you go on further and further into the game, it's worth even more. Tanks can get real tanky. Let's look at Iron Skin. Iron Skin, by the way, exists at level 1. It exists at level 1 and gives you stats. Well, Iron Skin is worth 100 gold worth of armor, and Mirror Shell is worth uh, 90 gold, excuse me, worth of magic resist. 
and I looked at a level 10 Ari, for example. A level 10 Ari, uh, based on the stats that she has and everything else, would get 150 gold worth of armor out of Iron Shell, or 125.1 gold worth of Magic Resist out of Mirror Shell, if you can get the 5% to trigger, quite obviously, because the flat part wouldn't change. So, of course, these numbers are not as good. They are not as high as the numbers on Transcendence, but they work from level 1. And this is this becomes the really the weird the weird thing, right? If people look at mirror shell or you know iron skin, whatever, go okay, five armor, okay, that's cute, whatever. But but I can get ten CDR at level ten. Well, keep in mind, I actually looked at a couple solo queue games just for like some very basic numbers. For a solo laner, level ten comes in at like fourteen to fifteen minutes. It takes a while to get up there, right? About half the game has been decided by this point. I mean, games are taking like 32-ish minutes to complete. And keep in mind, like, we've all been in those 15 or 20-minute surrenders. Like, some games end before you even reach level 10. If you're in a 15-minute surrender, you literally had no rune. It literally never turned on. It did nothing, and the game ended. It did nothing, and the game ended in a 15-minute surrender. If you're in a dual lane, like you're in 80 carry, it's 16 to 17 minutes to get level uh, to get level 10. If your support it takes like 20 minutes to get level 10. A lot of games end by 20 minutes, or at least are decided, or almost decided by 20 minutes. All right, guys, we've lost lane. We lost lane. They got Baron. But I have 10 CDR on Sona now. I have 10 CDR on Sona now. We're going to win this game. Imagine what would have happened if you didn't give up first blood at Tristana. Right? If this is the comparison you're making, right? You get 20 minutes, if you're a support, of paying forward this armor and MR. And in fact, uh, you get another 10 minutes of paying this one forward, because, again, it's a 10-minute difference. 10 minutes for this one, 20 minutes for level 10 on a support. Like, I think Transcendence, by the way, is garbage on support. I think you should actually never get it, because level 10 takes so long. You're expected to be level, like, 20 minutes into the game. Like, why get a rune that only works 20 minutes into the game? Like, there is a reason that no one ever ran gold generation runes on any supports, up until 2017 Worlds, where everyone was, like, masturbating over how good Ardent Sensor was. And even that was only because it was gold turning into an, an efficient item, and it worked from level 1. You should never get Transcendence on support. I think you're actively terrible, and don't understand how League of Legends work if you get Transcendence on support. I think it's actually garbage. Um, when Celerity and even Absolute Focus just, like, will give you more in raw stats. I mean, you will, you will be in the state of Absolute Focus far more then you'll be in a state of transcendence if you're a support. Unless you're like literally playing Braum, in which case, why are you even in this tree in the first place? Um, I mean, I think it's it's ridiculously obvious. And the shape is you can't use absolute focus. Like Soraka's going to be injured too much. And again, if you're playing Braum or Thresh or whatever, you're not going to be in this tree at all. Uh, maybe Celerity, I guess. But like, I think transcendence is a freaking trap on support. It doesn't turn on until 20 minutes into the game. Don't get this rune. And again, it's it's like 14, 15 minutes. Like if you're ahead in mid lane, it's like 13 minutes. If you're behind in mid lane, it's like 15, 16. If you're in a dual lane, it really depends on how the game's going, but you're looking at like 16, 17 minutes. Like half the game is over. Like if you're playing like bot lane, I don't know, Lucian or Ezreal or something, half the game is over once you get to Transcendence. And even then, it's not even that good. This is an overrated rune. This is an overrated rune. I know I'm rallying a lot about Transcendence, but seriously. Uh, so, again, one of the things I've been doing with my numbers is I've been comparing level 10 to 10 minutes to level 1. And these are all different breakpoints, because obviously level 1 is the very beginning of the game. 10 minutes is 10 minutes, and, and level 10 is 15 to 20 minutes based on the role you're playing. Um, so it's I'm, I'm cheating a little bit, because really, I should be looking at... Um, you know, like, okay, at 10 minutes, which rune is better? 8 armor MR or 0 stats? You know, okay. So we're going to move on. Um, Again, these things are really, really efficient. Uh, iron Skin, Mirror Shell, Conditioning, these are all great things. Let's talk about the only thing I can do numbers on here, which is Overgrowth. Overgrowth grants you 0.2% max health per every eight minions or monsters that die near you. What is nice is it does not require that you last hit, only that minions and monsters died. Thinking about the jungle real quick, there are... Uh, assuming you can literally perfectly clear the jungle and you get, you get everything but the buff camps twice per five minutes and the buffs themselves every five minutes. There's 10 pieces to Krugs, so we're at 10... There is six to Raptors, there's three Wolves, and there's one Gromp. So that's 20, twice, so 40, plus the two buffs. 42 every 10 minutes, which is obviously much less than the laning. Uh, there's 12.6 minions 
every minute, so 126 minions every 10 minutes. So clearly there's a, a difference here. If you're only farming the jungle and you never show up to lane, overgrowth is, what is it, about one third is good. And that's if you literally perfectly clear the jungle every time. I know I'm not counting scuttles, but screw it. If you literally perfectly clear the jungle and never show up to lane, overgrowth is one third as good in the jungle as it is in a lane. Please keep that in mind. Of course, yes, if you walk in a lane, if you gank, if you push the wave afterwards and go back to your camps, if you take raptors or krugs more often than other people, if you don't go for gromp, but you gank instead, like you can you can bump this up a little bit. But truly, this is much, much lower if you're spending your time farming camps instead. Um, I'm going to do real quick math on um, jungle CS as well for this. So we talked about it being 40, um, 40 42 CS every 10 minutes, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so it's 42 actual monsters every 10 minutes, and it's 40 um, CS every 10 minutes as well, because you've killed 10 camps. So um, what's what's really great about this actually is uh, your, when you go to the scoreboard, your jungle CS actually doesn't lie to you in terms of how, like, pretty much it's very close and how many monsters died around you by tracking your, your actual farm uh, from camps. Um, but the difference is laners don't have to last hit to get overgrowth. They're going to continue to get 12.66666 CS per minute from overgrowth, which means at 10 minutes, yes, there have really been 112 or 114, whatever minis that have died near you. No jungler ever has actually 140, 114 CS at 10 minutes. No player has, 10 CS, uh, has 114 CS at 10 minutes either, unless you're like literally frogging. And yet they still get the full value of overgrowth. So let's do the math on overgrowth. Once again, I said, let's, let's look at a level 10 Ari as our example. Now, again, Ari wouldn't be level 10 at 10 minutes, but I just picked around numbers because they're easier to compare. With overgrowth, you're getting 91 roughly gold worth of health at 10 minutes. Uh, this was 112 minions died near Ari. Um, theoretically, like raptors could count too, so like she could cheat and walk to the raptor camp and cheat it up a little bit. That is probably an optimization that people can eventually use for themselves. Uh, and maybe junglers, when they're killing raptors, can also you know leech from the uh, the mid lane CS. I'm not sure, but uh, what I'm going to talk about is the fact that if you're a mage who doesn't have much health at 10 minutes at level 10, which again is aggressive, you're getting 91 gold worth of stats. Okay, well that's not very high. That's that's not a lot of stats. No, that's true. Um, okay, well, let's look at this another in another light. What about 300 CS, which is 25-ish minutes into the game? Uh, maybe 26? Okay, you're now pretty well into mid to late game. Okay, well, now that's this is now 7% bonus health, um, which 7.5% bonus health, which means if you're at maybe 2,000 max HP because you're, I don't know, Darius or whoever, doesn't really matter, or you just bought HP because you, you know, bought Riley's Leandries on brand, which is completely reasonable, by the way, to buy Riley's Leandries on brand, or a Rod of Ages on a Cassidin or whatever. And now you're getting 150 HP out of this, which is worth 400 gold. So at, you know, you know, late mid-game, right, your level 14-ish, yeah, it's 25 minutes into the game, 300 minions have died around you, it's worth 400 gold. All right, well, that's about where Legend Alacrity put us, but this is much later on. We're at 25 minutes or so. So you look at the math of like what overgrowth is really worth. Now, to be fair, I'm not counting the resolve primary bonus in this. The, you know, if you're a resolve primary, there's of course more added, but um, you kind of look at the numbers and again, you compare it to Legend Alacrity being worth 450, Transcendence, if you can convert the stat, you know, and, and those are, you know, somewhat greedy runes, right? They don't turn on right away. And it takes a lot to make overgrowth worth it. Uh, now, again, as time goes on, if you're at 30 minutes, you've been around 350 CS or so. The percentage goes up a little bit higher. If your max HP is more like 3K, right? It, it becomes efficient only in the case that you're really playing a real tank. But the way the numbers line up with overgrowth, it's not, it's not worth doing if you're not actually a tank. If you don't have health ratios you care about, if you don't really care about the HP in and of itself. So, um, And what this means is if you are playing Resolve Primary, you have to either get overgrowth or revitalize for stronger shields and heals, which, hey, can be worth it, or second win for the region in a bad laning phase. If you don't want, and, and again, overgrowth, really only good for tanks, uh, only good for hard lane matches because the region is based on health, um, and revitalize, which is only people who shield and heal, these are all situational, even just to take them in the first place. So resolve primary, because it requires you to take one of these, 
is going to always be very situational. I think Leona can make use of this. Again, she doesn't have to last hit to do this. She's going to get her uh, Eye of the Equinox. She's going to get her, you know, other items and whatnot. You know, she'll get up there. It'll be fine. But it is not really so easy. All right. We finally have uh, one more thing I wanted to bring up. I'm kind of jumping around trees a little bit, which is two more of these uh, runes down here. Celestial Body and Cosmic Insight in the Inspiration Tree as far as math is concerned. So Cosmic Insight... Obviously, it gives a bunch of different things. It gives 5 CDR flat. It gives 5 max CDR. It gives you some summoner spell CDR. It gives you some item CDR. It is very hard for me to properly cost out or give gold value to summoner spell and item CDR. Um, I know by looking at Boots of Lucidity, I actually have the numbers. I can look up those in a second. Um, theoretically, the 10% summoner CDR costs 110 gold um, if you're going to compare it just to the raw item and what it costs. Um, if after the CDR of the item itself, it's 110 gold for 10 CDR, so you can say maybe it's worth 555 gold for this. I don't know if that's really fair or not, but that's one way to look at it. But just looking at the basic CDR itself, I want to tell you guys really what max CDR is worth. So if Quinn Reduction is actually valued initially at 0%, 10 CDR is worth 250 gold, 5 CDR is worth 125 gold. Okay, yeah, great. That's not very hard to do. 125 gold seems pretty bad. Why are you giving me 125 gold with a rune? That seems kind of weak. Well, if you're at 40 CDR and you go from 40 to 45, your like real quid reduction difference is more like 9% or 8% or so, which is worth 208 gold. Uh, so if you go from 40 to 45 because of Cosmic Insight, your like real cooldown reduction change is more like 8%, which is worth 208 gold. Um, Additionally, there's actually more edge cases in this where if you're playing something with a flat cooldown reduction mechanic on the kit, such as Lucian or Skarner, where they just they, they flatly reduce what it gets uh, what their cooldowns are by a flat value that's not scaled by CDR, this can be even higher because you know you can go from a spell being 1.8 now it's 1.5, but if you can reduce it by one second flat, the difference between 0.8 and 0.5 is really massive. Right? And it's more than 5% by a long shot. It's more than 8% by a long shot. It's it's really significant. It's almost 25%. Um, roughly. It's around there. Whatever. It's like 40%. Anyway, moving on. Um, so there, like this is the kind of thing where like 45 CDR in and of itself is not actually incredibly amazing, holy crap, ridiculous. Again, Karma is another example of a champion like this who could, you know, use the 45 CDR with ultimate hat and things like that. Um, but I think the only reason you want to bring this is because you have a flat reduction. And yeah, okay, summon a spell CD and item CD uh, are really hard to value out. And so if you actually consider them to be worth, I don't know, roughly the same cost as spell equivalent reduction, then, I mean, then you're looking at 125 gold worth of CDR for each one of those. Now, I would generally put item cooldown as definitely less than spell cooldown because it's very hard to use items on cooldown all the time. Summoner spell cooldown is more debatable, but I think still summoner spells are less important than spells. So I think, you know, putting them at half or one third value is fair. Um, and again, it still puts the point uh, of this mastery or this rune at not gold efficient unless you're really abusing the 45 CDR fact on your champion. Uh, I want to go over to Celestial Body though. Uh, nice. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, Okay, we're just going to hover this for a while. Celestial Body, uh, the actual 100 HP, is worth 266.7 gold. Um, again, we looked at all of our other runes. We looked at, for example, Iron Skin. Iron Skin's worth about 100 and change, you know, 40-ish gold worth of uh, armor if you're using a potion level 1, things like this. Uh, you know, the numbers depend on the champion quite a lot, obviously. Uh, mirror shell, right, worth 30-ish gold. It's like 100 to 130, whatever. Um, so I want to point out, though, that if you're in a lane where you're considering going Iron Skin because your lane is really hard, you know, if you're playing Sona and it's like, guys, dude, this is such a hard lane. I don't want to get killed by the Caitlyn. Uh, you know, the, it's a really beast of flame, taking a lot of poke. Or, or you're playing Braum or Alistair and you're taking a lot of poke and you need to survive the lane. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to run Iron Skin. Uh, Iron, Iron Skin. I'm going to run Second Wind. You know, maybe I even... Uh, run Font of Life because I'm playing a tank support. Okay, great. It's like, well, if Iron Skin's efficient, then Celestial Body is doubly efficient. Because Iron Skin, in and of itself, by itself, without the percentage bonus, and again, it would take 100 armor to double 
the value of that thing because it's 5% bonus. Um, and you're not getting 100 armor for a while. And even then, if you have 100 armor and this thing is on, it's still only worth 200 gold worth of stats. Social body is worth 267 gold worth of stats. And again, we talked about this before. Health level 1 is really, really, really efficient. Now, sure, doing less damage to champions, less damage to monsters can be meaningful. And when you're playing Alistair, sometimes you really want to deal damage and, and you know, there's considerations to be had, etc., etc. But if you're in a bad lane where you don't get to do much damage and it's really not very great, this is a meaningful amount of durability. You get really tanky. You get really, really tanky running Celestial Body. And again, it is two and a half times as good as Iron Skin. If you're already running a, a, a rune to give yourself level 1 durability, you should be already considering Celestial Body. Um, now, certainly, yes, doing less damage to champions can be painful, but considering that you have that at 10 minutes, right, you're going to be level 7 or 8 or whatever, you do you have far more than 10% more health, the cost of those you do 10% less damage. And sure, that's a consideration. That's a consideration that up until that point, you did 10% less damage for your 100 extra HP. But again, if you're if you're fighting someone one-on-one, -on -one, like if you're just facing a Zed, right, and you're battling each other in a minion line, and you're doing damage back and forth, it's like, well, you both have minions, and you both have can have true damage with things like Ari's Q, Passback, or Ignite, or whatever else. The damage you deal to Zed is more than just your damage. It's 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 turrets and minions and the jungler showing up, and so, I mean, realistically. 10% less damage from you is not 10% less damage to the champion. But 100, 100 more health is more than 10% more durability. Now, it's still a kiss curse. It's still not necessarily worth the slot if you're playing Ari in the mid lane. And I think it's completely reasonable that you might never run this on a carry roll. But if you're playing Sivir and you just want to not lose lane, like, it's okay to run Celestial Body. It doesn't hurt your last hitting. So I think it's an underrated rune. As far as the math's concerned, it's actually pretty decent. One other math thing I wanted to point out is only really one that has a very obvious analog is Electrocute and comparing it to Thunderlord's Decree. Uh, a lot of people didn't realize this. Thunderlord's turned into Electrocute, of course. It got a bit harder to trigger, sure. The cooldown went up, but the damage went up massively. The base damage went up a flat 40, because it went from 10 to 180, it became 50 to 220, and the ratios went up 0.2 on each. It's now 0.5, 0.3. It used to be 0.3, 0.1. So I looked at an example case. Let's say your, um, I mean, pretty much actually it's really easy to look at, right? It's it's a 0.2 higher ratio and the base damage is up 40. So at 300 ability power, Electrocute does 100 more damage. So if you're, let's say, level 7, you're level 7 with 300 AP. That's a bit aggressive. You probably don't have 300 AP at level 7, but I chose an example. Screw it. You went for really greedy runes. You found a way to get there. In the old version, Thunderlords would have done 100 damage. In this version, Electrocute does 200 damage. That's a really substantial difference. That's the kind of numbers you're looking at here, right? It's literally doubled in power in some cases. Um, you know, at, at level... 18, it would have done a 180, now it does 220. At uh, 300 AP, again, your bonus damage goes up to 100, but at um, like at 700 AP, at like a full late game, it went from doing 210 to doing 420 damage, roughly. Those are, those are, I didn't do the math, but that's roughly the numbers, it did it in my head. So Electrocute does roughly double damage all game based on the buffs. That's really good. Really, 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 really good. Um, your compensation is that the cooldown is roughly doubled, but it does way more damage in a burst. What this also means is that it's even better in the jungle than it was before. Because as a laner, you're you're kind of trading back and forth Thunderlords all the time, and the half cooldown reduction, or the half cooldown that Thunderlords had, came into effect all the time. If you're jungling and you're ganking as Kha'Zix, it goes back from cooldown every gank anyway, and it just does double the damage as before. So, I mean, really, really huge bonuses here on Electrocute. This thing is massively good. All right, it's been an hour already, so I'm going to end this video here. Um, we'll go through example builds in another um, 
in another video and break down the rest of the runes a bit more. But this was, I guess, part one of Runes Reforged, and it's all about the math. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment. Let me know what else you want to see from me as well. I would love to take advice and do other things. Thanks, everyone, for watching. You guys are wonderful, and I'll see you next time.